Hello and welcome to another edition of Real Talk. Well, the property market continues in a bull fashion, certainly in the homeowner marketplace. Um, we're seeing some unbelievable results. We had about 16, 1700 properties go to market on the weekend and we still had high 70s in a clearance rate. So nothing's changed. Uh, there's certainly talk at the moment of banks wanting to independently put up their rates and it's not surprising. Their margins are being really, really squeezed with the RBA dropping rates. The RBA right now would probably like to drop rates, but I think they're at a, a level now where they feel if they drop rates any further, then they might invoke household debt there's, they've got the issue of the runaway property market at the moment. So I really think the RBA will hold. Um, the great news is the inflation figures that have just come out for the quarter are, are really in a nice sweet spot. We've actually had growth in the quarter, which means that um, the government is really hoping to achieve 3% growth and we've certainly had a good outcome in, in Q1. So I think it's a matter of um, a balance between the RBA dropping rates to um, stimulate the economy, but then dropping rates to the point that there's um, the continuation of the runaway market in the property sector. Interestingly enough, I don't think the property market is in a runaway situation singularly based on interest rates. I think you've got 2,000 people coming every week to Melbourne at the moment. Um, it's going to be very interesting too because we've got such a large student uh, population of overseas students who come to study here and I really think that that's going to actually strengthen in the next two years. I've been looking at the data for um, what Brexit's doing to students and what Trump is going to do to students turning some away if they have the wrong passport. I actually think, um, hold on to your seats, I think we're going to see a real surge in our um, overseas student market here, which obviously stimulates more uh, need for apartments and, and the like. So um, my message at the moment really is uh, for the investors to be sitting tight. I think I'm seeing some investors at the moment getting very frustrated because they've held their properties for three or five years and they haven't seen a lot of growth in certain sectors. Um, in fact, you know, not so much people in my program, but we're seeing properties come on the market where the investors have opted out. And I really think when you're in a bull market like this in, in one sector of the market, which is the homeowner market, it can actually tilt people into feeling, um, you know, losing faith in the formula. And here's the thing, property, you have to hold property for at least a cycle, which is seven to 10 years. And if you don't hold it for that time, you won't get the benefit out of it. And I, I, I really don't understand, in a market like this, people are ignoring a lot of the fundamental golden rules. They're golden rules for a good reason. They're they're there to stand the test of time, and that's a depressed market, uh, whether you call it a bear market or a bull market, a flat market, whatever. If you follow the golden rules for investing, be in it for the long term. If you quit something prematurely, you're actually likely to invoke a loss, which is then going to dissuade you from heading back into the market. So it is challenging times for investors. However, the good news is, the government's on track for, with their inflation. The RBA is unlikely to reduce rates anymore. The banks have come out now and said that they are finally going to um, exercise their individual rights and CBA is leading the charge with increasing rates. So I think that's all going to um, roll into what I'm really seeing now as quite a positive outcome for the investor market. So um, I'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much for listening and uh, see you again next week. Oh,